So, my name is Angus Murray. Uh, my company is Foxy's Pash Frozen Yogurt, and thank you for pronouncing that correctly. It's quite, we get Pash and very editions in between. Um, we have been around for a few years. I started the brand in Australia in 2009 uh, with my college buddy. We're both English. We both ended up in Australia. It's a complicated but totally legal story. Um, we, love dragged me over here about five years ago, and I, um, and I spent a bit of time working out which uh, uh, products we should launch um, and how we needed to adapt and be resilient um, to, to get our product out there. Um, so we're a nutritionally responsible choice when it comes to luxury and decadence. Uh, we're all natural. Um, our first customer was Walmart, uh, which is sort of greeted with cheers and booze in equal measure. Um, where we have now a manufacturing facility up in Modesto, uh, which is guaranteed RBST-free uh, milk. We've got great uh, practices around uh, the products that we use and, and put into our frozen yogurt. Um, we are aiming for, we're all natural now, but we're aiming for a um, non-GMO, completely organic product by the end of next year. One of the things that we want to do is make sure that we're on shelf for an accessible price point for the nutritionally savvy but not militant consumer. We have built over the last two years a very solid um, uh, supply chain. We use the uh, country's largest uh, refrigeration um, uh, and frozen warehouse uh, company called Millard. We have a great relationship with those guys, so we are scaled nicely now for success, which I hope is around the corner. We're supported by the California Milk Advisory Board. They subsidize a lot of our marketing, and again, they uh, uh, provide a high level of, of husbandry practices for the California milk um, uh, farmers. Uh, and we have a focus on local ingredients. My business is based in Ventura. We're up in Modesto. The vast majority, like 90% of our ingredients, come within a five-hour drive of the plant. Uh, a lot of the fruit that we use, and you'll taste some later, comes from the Oxnard Plains uh, just down the street. So what is PASH? It's a, a healthier, not healthy, it's healthier alternative when it comes to luxury and decadence. We have six flavors at the moment. Naughty, frisky, sassy, fancy, uh, cheeky, and sneaky. One of the reasons we do that is to break down stereotypes of people who don't necessarily like fruit in their ice cream or they don't think chocolate chunks are appropriate. We haven't found one of those people yet, but I'm sure they're, they're around there somewhere. Um, and again, you'll hear me say this a lot. It's nutritionally savvy consumers we're after, not militant. They're not juicing kale for breakfast and, and, and forcing garlic on the kids. So why do it? Why should we do it? Uh, ice cream has been around for over 100 years in this country. Um, some say that the Chinese had it before, before Christ. It's, um, it's a treat. It's a reward. It's, it's a bribe to get the kids to, to tidy up the rooms. Um, it's, it's something sweet before bedtime. It's, uh, it's, it's how to discover some self-respect when you're watching the Bachelor finale. We know, we know how many people there are, and we know what their habits are. We don't, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, for the competitors. Um, it's not supposed to clear up your complexion. It's not supposed to make you skinny. It's, it's those rewards. So what we did was strip out the calories, and we strip out a lot of the sugar, but not all of it, and we um, churn it, and we culture the product so it actually should resemble uh, a quality ice cream. The highest compliment you could give me later when you try it is to say, I can't believe this is frozen yogurt. And for two of our SKUs, I can't believe there's actually no fat in it at all. Um, speaking of the nutritional comparison and the benefits thereof, um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but we've, I've tried to illustrate some comparably flavored um, ice cream and frozen yogurt against our range. Um, and you'll see that our sassy and our cheeky, I'll just draw your attention to those, are 90 calories, zero from fat. The, the comparable Weight Watchers flavors um, are about 100 and 110 calories. We're two Weight Watchers points. Um, they are four Weight Watchers points, which is critical to our demographic. The Supreme Pashas. Well, this is me. Um, I have a BSc from uh, Exeter in Biological and Medicinal Chemistry. Uh, I've just completed an MBA from the University of Wales and a diploma of, uh, from the Institute of Sales and Promotion in, in, uh, in London. I've got 18 years of small to medium-sized enterprise management experience, five years at SVP uh, board level um, for profit and not-for-profit organizations, most recently the, the Pro Surfing World Tour, which is completely irrelevant to this business. Um, Ron Simmer. Lovely guy. He's the former general manager of Thrifty Ice Cream. Uh, SoCal natives will, will know who that is. He also ran the Baskin Robbins plant in SoCal for many years. What he doesn't know about producing this stuff isn't worth knowing. He, and he knows how to scale up to uh, hundreds of millions of gallons in production. Michael Taylor, the pretty one, my business partner, my, uh, my college buddy. We call him the brand father. He's got nice pointy shoes and always wears yellow because he thinks it makes him more attractive. But he understands how to get into a consumer's mind and uh, is responsible for the packaging, and you'll see that later. We've been graced with a few awards for it. 
Um, just lingering on that, we have two other uh, advisors. We have Elliot Bagone, who's the uh, former senior vice president at Foster Farms, um, and also Dr. Jennifer Hughes, who's actually my wife. She's a pediatrician with a specialist in nutrition, so she signs off on all of the ingredients um, and the levels and, and keeps an eye on trends. So who's passing? Anybody who's ever bought ice cream, um, who is the budget manager of the household, uh, who is aware of what's going into their children's mouths, into their own mouths, into their partner's mouths, is on a budget. Um, I mentioned it before, nutritionally savvy, but not militant. Um, and aware of Weight Watchers points. And there's a, there's a bunch of other demographics we can talk about um, till the cows come home. But really, it's, it's ice cream people who shop at grocery stores. It's, it's that simple. And of that, there's between 90 and 120 million people in the US who, who fall into that category. Who are our competitors? Well, we're the only dedicated frozen yogurt brand. Everyone else is an extension. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Yoplait last year went from refrigerated yogurt into frozen and failed. Uh, Stonyfield have done the same thing, refrigerated yogurt. They're in this year. Um, unfortunately for them, we're now kicking them off, um, off the shelf uh, when we come in and, and, and present our sales pitch. Um, Halo Top, lovely local company, high protein, very nice. Um, Arctic Zero, I think it's just horrible. Um, and it's, but those guys have got a small market of very loyal customers. We want to generate comparable loyalty, but in a much more mainstream, grocery, natural specialty way. Our marketing plan. Those of you familiar with uh, Frank Lloyd Wright will appreciate the compress and release structure of this business model. Uh, we wanted to build best-in-class supply chain, but didn't really want to pay for it. So there's a lot of negotiation and, and, and silver-tongued um, chatting that went into get Millard on board, to get our plant on board. Anyone who's been in grocery and CPG will know that it, largely it's a pay-to-play model. We have two types of, of grocery chains. One sells real estate and they charge you slotting fees. The other one will want uh, everyday low price, which erodes your margin. Um, we, we've experimented with both of those things with mixed results. Um, the positive is that we are now selling. The main principles that we need to focus on is the trial. We need to get trial. We need to pay for that. We need to get samples, demos done, very expensive way of doing things. But what we know from the, from the last two years is that people come back and they then buy it. So we get into someone's mouth, we've got a 97% peer recommendation rate. And this is all documented through our sampling efforts. We then need to engage with that consumer. We do that through the packaging, the price, our social media, um, our regional media, which is some of the money that we're looking forward to, to spend on it. Price, very important. We, we subscribe and, and believe in the, in the model that Jenny's Ice Cream can sell a $12 pint, but we want to be in the shopping basket every week. Eggs, bread, milk, foxies. Um, and the, the nutritional uh, benefits of that, plus the price, means that, that, that we're, on, we're on track to do it. Once we've stopped spending or reduced spending on slotting fees, uh, which we'll need to spend over the next two years, we can then start to reap some of those rewards. We can take our foot off the gas of spending and start to make a bit more profit. What I want to do is then reinvest that back into getting those, those, um, the loyal customers. Our current status. We're currently in th actually four distributors. So since I submitted this to Jerry, we've picked up another one, UNFI in Atlanta. Uh, we're in Albertsons. We're in Fresh and Easy. They're a top, top customer of ours, and they love us. They've, in fact, just asked us uh, to produce some specific flavors for them. Um, Lassen's, Vintage Grocers, uh, Whole Foods Northern California. We're going into Whole Foods Southern Pacific uh, in November. Um, so we're picking up a lot of speed, and we have a turnkey program for that. Our financial projections, and I mean, it's the same graph as you've seen all day. Um, except I think ours is not, we're pragmatic about it. We, we know uh, other companies and what their exits are. We think that with the right money and the right team, we can get to 30 million um, in, in the next five years. Our cogs reduce. We're paying additional stuff now to get the best in class supply chain. Those will reduce uh, with volume. So we've been bootstrapped so far. Myself, Michael, and our COO, uh, Ron, who's um, um, has put in 300,000 thereabouts. Um, at the moment, this year, we will do um, $350,000 of revenue. Uh, we're looking for 2.2 million commitment over two years, a million up front, and the use of work is for working capital, marketing and media uh, personnel. Stellar management team. Brand is established and growing. We've made the mistakes. Uh, the category is mainstream. It's, it's a very large category. It's a very growth category. And we're deliberately sexy, but we're not too trendy. Uh, we want to make, remain mainstream. So please try some after lunch, with lunch, uh, before lunch, and come and see me, and um, let's chat more, more about it.